Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I open the mailbag and answer your questions, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, first off, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. In the last week, we picked up over 600 new viewers, and which is great. Uh, thanks for joining us. As a recap for all the new people that are joining, uh, every month I pick out a few of the emails and comments from previous videos and answer your questions. So if you have a question, or an idea for a future video, please leave it in the comments below. Also be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'll be um, giving you a channel update on what will be happening in the coming weeks. But first, on to the questions. Last year about this time, I released a video highlighting some proposed uh, changes to the technician license. Now, this was based on a petition for rulemaking submitted by the ARRL to allow technician license holders to receive um, expanded HF phone privileges. So what's the status of this petition? Uh, JP comments, well, it never came to fruition. Well, maybe perhaps, but the short answer to this question is that the petition isn't dead yet until the FCC denies it. And they haven't done so. In fact, the subject of increased technician privileges in the HF bands are still very much alive. In early February of this year, the ARRL HF Ban Planning Committee sought comments on their recommendations for an HF ban plan that includes uh, technician phone privileges. Those results were forwarded to the ARRL board. In conjunction with uh, the comment period, uh, the League also created a new uh, HF ban planning discussion group. This online group will focus on the um, HF, ARL HF ban planning committee's recommendations and other ban planning activities. I'll have a link to that group in the video description below if you want to take part in it. So the process of expanded phone privileges, you know, may not be moving forward as fast as some people like, but it's still moving forward. I received a couple of questions and comments on last summer's video of the Redivis RT97 uh, portable repeater uh, field test. You remember this uh, small 10 watt uh, UHF repeater that's in an all-in-one package. Eric asks a more general question about repeaters. What kind of power output uh, are fixed location VHF UHF repeaters typically using? You know, that's a great question, in that in building repeater system, selecting the power output is a bit of an art. Uh, you want to deliver a strong signal, but you also don't want the repeater to transmit a further, a further distance than what it can re reliably receive. You may also need more power to help overcome losses in the feed line and duplexer systems. Many repeater sites will be content to use a full duty cycle 50 watt transmitter uh, as their final output, but some sites will, may also include a power amplifier to put out between 100 to 250 watts. One advantage of using an amplifier is that um, a continuous duty amplifier allows the repeater transmitter to run at a lower power level, uh, thereby in prolonging its life. And second, you know, an amplifier will, um, can help overcome the losses in the feed line system and the duplexers. For example, you could lose, you know, maybe three to six dB or more of, po of, of power in those two components alone. So an amplifier becomes a kind of an equalizer, you know, in your overall repeater performance and output. In a second comment, Philip says, I have a fairly simple bash script I wrote to turn any Linux or Pi machine into a simplex repeater. It also has the option to store all received transmissions. That could be useful for field testing, uh, hearing now how the signal sounded you know, when it arrived. Well, thanks for that offer. Uh, I did take a look at the script and it appears to be very well commented. So if you're handy in these kind of things, you know, this may be a uh, great way to put together an inexpensive simplex repeater. I'll put links to the script in the video des description below. In my video review of Radio Oddities GD73, I mentioned that, um, it had a high BER or bit error rate. Uh, Eldon offers an update. Two things. Well, the high BER was addressed in a recent firmware update. Uh, the, and the ability to copy and paste in the configuration software or to reorder the entries is largely solved by using the export import feature. However, the export import feature does require Excel. 
Well, thanks for the information. The firmware update wasn't available when I did the review, so it's good to, good to hear that they're updating, you know, fixing some of the performance issues of the radio. And importing and exporting the channels, you know, that seems like a really good idea. I really haven't thought about that. Uh, there's a couple other radio models that do have this same limitation uh, in ordering the channels, so that might be an option. Don't You, you may not need to use Excel. Um, Google Docs would uh, also be a... Uh, Good alternative for the import-export, and it's a it's a free application. So uh, you might want to give that a shot if you're looking if you're having trouble uh, rearranging channels in your handheld radio. And speaking about DMR radios, Zhu Zhang asks, "Well, I'm curious about why hams do not use the P8668i as a device. Uh, I want to make a decision between Motorola P8668i and Yaesu FT3D. Uh, can you give me some advice, please?" Well, and, and he also follows up by saying, by the way, uh, the same model of the P8668i in North America might be the XPR7550E. Uh, and thanks for your question. You know, there are a few reasons. Uh, Motorola gear tends to be more expensive since the company is targeting the commercial and the public safety markets. Uh, plus, new equipment has to be purchased through a dealer network and it can be more difficult to program as you need proprietary software and uh, Motorola usually only releases that software to its dealers. Um, but Motorola gear tends to be, um, you know, it's, it's highly reliable and on the, news, on the used market, uh, it really finds its way into the hands of amateur radio operators when state and municipal agencies will often sell their old gear to just about anyone. But more specific to your point, I believe the P866i is sold in the Asian market. Um, I haven't, so I haven't seen that market. I haven't seen that model in the U.S. You know, hence, you know, it might be cross-listed as the XPR7550. Uh, the ASU FT3DR is a System Fusion uh, C4 FM radio, while the, the Motorola uh, runs um, Moto Turbo, and both are digital technologies, but are incompatible with each other. Your choice would be would depend on you know what's more popular in your area, uh, DMR or System Fusion. Well, I'm going to finish up the Q and A section of this video with a few comments on my recent um, product preview of the um, Yaesu FTM 300 the DR. This is a dual band mobile radio with analog and a, a C4 FM System Fusion support. The radio is currently in production and it should be available uh, for sale by sometime in April of this year. The largest number of comments and complaints were on the looks of the radio, uh, most notably the display. Uh, ben says, I had to look at the date of this video to make sure the radio wasn't released 10 years ago. And seriously, this does not look like something that should be coming out in 2020. And others uh, mentioned that it looks something that came out of China or that Yezu copied the Anytone uh, 878 mobile. Um, I guess beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. I, I don't have an opinion one way or the other on the front panel or the display itself without using it, but um, I really do like my large um, touchscreen display on the FTM 400. So a smaller div uh, display in, um, for a vehicle mounted radio might be a step backwards for me. So I'm going to reserve my judgment until I use one. But the, really, the $64,000 question comes from um, IW1PRT and also uh, from the viewer Martin. Well, hello. Do you know if the FTM300 works in analog or digital transponder mode? And also, uh, what do I want to know is will it do crossband repeat in fusion mode? Everybody wants to know the answer to that question, and Yezu's not saying. Um, I'm going to speculate that um, it may do analog crossband repeat as the FTM300 will have um, two VFOs, but I don't know about um, digital crossband, and Yezu's not saying. It, I've been told that the FTM400, in the way that um, its audio chain is configured, uh, digital crossbanding is impossible. So that might be a limitation of the FTM300, or you know maybe with uh, the use of two fusion uh, vocoders in the FTM300, and they might be able to overcome that. You know, it, it remains to be seen um, what the cross-banding capabilities are gonna be on the FTM300 until after it is um, officially released. 
Finally, Field Radio says, uh, the FTM 300 will never take the place of the FTM 400. The FTM 400 is just a better radio. Yezu should have just improved the 400 and called the, it the FTM 600. If anything, I'll probably be taking, uh, if anything, probably taking the place of the FTM 100. Yeah, we will see. And I'd have to tend to agree with that. I've seen a lot of comments speculating that the 300 will replace the 400. Uh, John Kruk of Yesu did a video on the um, about a week or so ago uh, that he released that where he talks a bit about uh, the FTM 300, its features, and a little bit of the design philosophy that Yesu um, held. You know when they when they put this radio together. So um, if you want uh, if you want a little bit more um, official information on the FTM 300, I, I I suggest you check that out. I'll throw a link up here in the so you can, you can watch that video. Uh, but uh, basically he says that they've designed the FTM 300 as a mid-level offering somewhere between the, one, the FTM 100 and the FTM 400. Well, that's it for this month's questions. You know, here's what's going on for the month of March. In the next few weeks, uh, until early April, uh, it's gonna be very busy for me. Uh, some of you may know that in addition to making these videos and um, selling antennas, I also have a side gig serving as an elected official on the Wausau City Council. Uh, this is an election year, so this month I really have to focus a lot of my energy into my re-election campaign. Now in the state of Wisconsin, all local elected officials, you know, that's city council, county supervisor, school board, etc., they're all nonpartisan. So, you know, don't ask or assume that you, you may know what my political leanings are. You know, I'm, I'm pretty um, nonpartisan and pragmatic. I serve all my constituents equally and, for the, and really for the betterment of the community. So coming up, um, video-wise, uh, Joe has offered to help out. Uh, he's, he put together a couple of videos where we'll be releasing over the next uh, couple of weeks, so you can look forward to those. Uh, I'd like to just remind everybody that the Wisconsin CUSO party is also coming up on the 15th of March. I'm planning to be on the air um, for the event, and also uh, I may hope to have a video on that. The snow is melting rapidly, and so as long as we don't get dumped on this month, I may be able to um, back again operating outdoors. We'll see. And of course, there's also the, if there's any topic that you'd like to see, I'll leave me a comment below and I'll add it to the list. Well, that's it for this month's questions. You know, please keep them coming. You can leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through them. We'll keep that conversation going. And who knows, maybe uh, one of them will show up on the next Your Questions Answered video. For more artic articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so you can do a few things for me. Number one, if you like this video, you know, give me that big thumbs up. It's really appreciated and it helps out a lot. Uh, you can check out some of the um, recommended videos that are going to pop up alongside me here. And also, if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and the bell notification will inform you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9BBR. Have a great day and 73.